Tatum to the basket. Milwaukee calls time. Welcome to Celtics post game live. Eddie House, Amina Smith here with the Celtics for the win against the Milwaukee Bucks, 122 to 119, and it came down to the wire for this Celtics team. And then, you know, throughout the game, Eddie, it really felt like the Celtics they were trying to pull away. The Bucks still right there, two of the top teams in the East going at it. What did this win solidify for you? Well, it, it, it meant a lot because the, the game was in runs. You know, we made our run and we had a longer run than they had, and they made their run and came back. But we were able to to cut their water off. You know, we didn't allow them to ever take the lead or tie the game. We stayed in front, and that's big. Um, and and we did it in different ways that we used to do. You know, we would just jack up threes and shoot threes. No, it's it's trying to get to the basket. It's taking our time um, and and sharing the basketball, moving, and then getting stops on defense, contesting shots and things like that. So I really like this win. I know that in the fashion, it, it, we should have won by more, you would think, but a W is a W is a W. Right. And at the end of the day, we're showing that we can win in a multitude of ways. It was an ugly win for this Celtics team because you don't want to see it go down to the wire like that but what ugly it was a little uh, come on they should have a w is a w is cute to me too (laughs) but when you win by 20 it's cuter you know what i'm saying that's beautiful okay it's beautiful (laughs) (laughs) you know this bucks team they stayed in it the entire matchup eddie what allowed the bucks to kind of try and keep this game close well you think you got bobby portis championship pedigree Mm -hmm. you got we know dame lillard uh top 75 player. So those two guys really stepped up for them. Um, they had Connington kept the ball alive a couple times, got a layup, you know, kept uh, uh, offensive rebound alive when they were trying to come back there at late in the game. But those two guys in particular were the, the ones that spearheaded that comeback, and they made all the plays down the stretch for the Milwaukee Bucks. And we saw some big plays out of Jalen Brown as well. He's with Abby Chin after this win. Jalen, you took on the challenge of guarding Damian Lillard pretty much this entire game. Take me through that final stop at the rim that closed this game out. Uh, just trying to chase him around all game. He's tough. You know, I give a lot of respect to Dame, man. I was in his, I was in his jersey all, all game long, and he still made some tough shots. So, um, shout out to him. But, no, that was my assignment. That's what I took on the challenge and, and helped us get the win. But, no, we got to be better in the fourth. You guys did hold them off. What's different about this team this season in the clutch? Um, I just think that uh, we got different 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 lineups, different team. We got Przingis, we got Drew, who wasn't out there today, but we got guys that can make a difference. Um, so we just play with poise, take our time and get some good shots. I thought tonight we got some good looks in the fourth. We just couldn't get a stop. Um, but we had, we didn't we didn't panic, we didn't rush. We got some good offense. So um, Credit to Milwaukee, though. They play good tonight. I know how close you are with Peyton and how much joy it brings you to see him shine. What kind of boost did he give this game? Peyton, uh, Peyton was balling tonight, man. And like games like this, where it's like two physical teams, it's like like the, it's the other guys that make the difference. For the, uh, for Milwaukee, it was Bobby Portis. For us, it was Peyton Pritchard. You know, he's been doing the night in and night out, and he deserves some credit. Finally, Jalen, did you know you guys have not lost to an Eastern Conference team in this building this season? How much pride are you taking in that streak? I didn't know that, uh, but it means a lot. But we got to keep that up going into the playoffs. So obviously, this is a, do- a new team, new year. But um, it's been a blessing to be on this squad. So we just got to keep it up. Starts on defense, and we continue it on offense, and um, try to find. Way to win. Jalen, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. And Jalen Brown yet again locked in on defense for this matchup against the Milwaukee Bucks. He said he was in Damian Lillard's jersey, and I laughed when he said that, Eddie, because it just reminded me of the commitment that Jalen Brown talked about on the defensive end of the floor. How did that show up tonight? Well, he, he made it tough. Like, you know, Dane was 11 for 21, had 32 points. He made some buckets, but a lot of those shots were tough. And you could live with a guy making tough shots if you're doing everything right defensively. The team is in the right place defensively, and you, you, you're carrying out your defensive game plan. And, you know, that's the reason why Dame is a top 75 player. He still finishes, finishes with 32 But that was probably the toughest 32 I've seen Damian Lillard have. I haven't seen him have 32 that tough. And it was because 
Jalen Brown was in his jersey. Yeah. You know, everywhere he went, he made, made sure that he at least felt him. If it wasn't being physical with him, it wasn't contesting his shot, it was just denying him. Whatever it was that he was doing to try to take him out of his rhythm. I mean, if, if somebody wasn't watching this game and they just looked up and said, oh, damn, Dame Lillard had 32, Jalen Brown really didn't do anything. No, if you watch the game, you can see the effect that Jalen Brown had on him. And Damian Lillard really didn't start getting those shots until the second half yep. of this matchup. All right, let's take a look at that late execution in the fourth quarter and see how it all went down for this Celtics team. Up by three at this point. Jason Tatum attacking. Something we don't see very often from Jason Tatum, but then he gets a drive and foul right here. And then obviously going to get those two buckets at the free throw line. And then again, Jason Tatum driving again to the basket late in the fourth quarter. That makes it 114 to 107. And then Chris Stats Porzingis on this next play. You're going to see him with this offensive rebound. Chris Stats Porzingis at the right place at the right time, being so aggressive in this game as well. And that's really where the Celtics team, they kind of sealed this game. And then Malik Beasley, a costly foul on Jalen Brown. And of course, Jalen Brown gets to the free throw line and makes both of those shots. Doc Rivers not happy about this one. Scal joining us live here on the desk. Scal, how did the Celtics look in that late game execution that people have questioned so much over the last month? Well, I mean, it was good because they just spaced the floor out. Jason Tatum against Malik Beasley. Tatum didn't rush. Tatum didn't settle for a step back jumper. It's just like, you know what? I'm just going to go where I need to go. I'm going to get to the spots that I want to get to. And if you don't come help, I'm going to go all the way to the rim. So I think what, what, when people talk about the Celtics, talk about Tatum late in games, I think it's the pull-up step-back jumpers that they're mad at. But in that situation, I, I really liked his poise of saying, I'm going to get the shot that I want. And no one on the Bucks came. He read the defense, and he got layups out of it. And I think people can all live with that. Eddie, what stood out to you about Jason Tatum? him in that late game execution uh, just everything that he just said I think it was one time today that he took a bailout shot and mm -hmm. I think it was Dame Lillard was guarding him it was in the first half it was on the left side of the floor and he went he oh, yeah. turn, you yep. know what I'm talking about I he do. did that turnaround jumper and it was a, a, enough time to where he could have got downhill and got to the basket like he did late in the game and I think seeing him making those adjustments on the fly for the most part, you got to think that we're, we're watching a uh, – this is this is a young man, right? When he came into the league, he's super young. So yeah. he's constantly developing and constantly getting better, constantly processing the game a little bit different. And so for me to see him do that when he got that, that matchup, that favorable matchup in the first half, then he took a turnaround jumper. In it, and I know that he was thinking to himself, like, man, I could have probably got to the basket. Mm -hmm. In the second half, he made that adjustment, got to the basket, especially with your boy, Beasley Billy out there. Beasley. Can't Guard you or me, huh? Wait a minute. <laughs> Don't think we forgot. Well, I mean, he can't guard you. Look, look, and I see your hand. You know what? This is my day. On my last no. day. I'm, I said he can't guard you. I said he can't okay, guard I'm, you. Look, I'm, so, I'm so used to Eddie talking about my handles because child is not uh, good. All right. <laughs> did you guys, did you, okay. So what do you make of us, the, like the fourth quarter before those moments? I mean, it was a weak 2-3 zone, mm -hmm. but we just settled all yeah, every we did. time. Yeah, if Derek White made some threes, I like those. But we went back to – I get it. Like, you don't want to sprint the ball up the court and everything like that. But I just felt like once a team goes – 5-0. They were 7-0. Now they're 9-0, 11-0, 15-2. Yeah. What are we doing at that point, right? right? With that. That, that, like, it's a week 2-3 zone that we're, we're like taking the bait for. And I just didn't like the way. That game could have went a lot of different ways at the end. Mm. But Tatum came through, delivered. They missed a few shots, whatever. You remember what Doc used to tell us when teams used to run 2-3 zone against us? Yeah. They can't guard us. Yeah. That's, that's, that's it, the whole reason it, why they run the zone. They can't guard us, yeah. right? I yeah. thought we got good looks. We just didn't make the shots. Derek White had some Really, really, really good yeah. looks, but we didn't we didn't make them. But at the same time, I, I'm with you. you we, we could attack a little bit more, yeah. especially when it's like one possession, two possession, three possessions. Yeah. You can make a difference. I didn't, I didn't love the way we closed that game out. Yeah. And then all I could think about is like, dang, Giannis Antetokounmpo sitting at and home. Not, that's what I was thinking about. Yeah. Also, we I was should like, be sending he's, a message. He's not even out there on the floor. You talk about the Bucks in that offense. They outscored the Celtics 36 to 21 in that fourth quarter. Although the Celtics found a way to win this game, a scout. 
what allowed the Bucks to pretty much have their way in that fourth quarter to get back in this game and have the chance to win? So they made some tough shots. Like, I'm going to give them credit. Like, they made some tough plays, but I just think it was us taking our foot off the gas, and mm -hmm. I get it. We don't need to sprint the ball up the floor when you're up by 18, but – there, there is a time where we're supposed to play with a little bit more swag once a team goes 6-0 on us, right? Though you could still, I just, I really wanted to send a message to the Bucks, and it just never felt like we were going to get to that point where we're going to send that message. Eddie, did this game give you any confidence about seeing the Bucks in the postseason, this Celtics team? Yeah, because I, I look at their team, and it's Bobby Portis, okay, and it's Chris Middleton, yeah. and I don't know Giannis. Those are probably the, the, the guys that you got to really, really worry about scoring the bulk of their points. You going to have to the ancillary players like the Brooke Lopez, the Crowders, you got to try to keep their water as low as possible, you know what I mean, and try to cut that off. But it's it's still a win. I thought, you know, we took care of the basketball. Sure we did. You know, um, and so w when I look at with everything in, in totality, you know, a win is a win is a win is a win. You know, I I, I, want, I would love to make have made a statement, right? I yeah. would have loved to came out come out there and, but you got to give that, that that's a pro, pro no. another you know there's some championship no, team over saying. here. Like how how difficult? Because I'm thinking about the playoffs. How difficult, Scal, do you think that matchup will be? Seven game series between the Celtics and the Bucks, even though the Celtics no, are I mean, head and shoulders I, I, above this is game else one. In the East. No, if this is game one, how are you feeling? No, so I, I and like. And it's game I, one okay. without Giannis, though. That's what I'm. Yeah, that, okay. Okay, that's it. so. Here's the thing, Bucks weren't on my radar as Bucks weren't on my radar at the beginning of the year when I was killing their defense. Mm -hmm. You guys remember that? You guys still making fun of me about that, right? <laughs> then, I, then I was like, wait a minute, Bucks are trending a certain direction. This team right now, by the time the playoffs roll around, we won't play them till the conference finals. They're gonna be a real deal. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm confident we're gonna win, but I'm telling you, this is not. They ended up as a team that's going to be a physical, hard-fought six, seven-game series that we're going to have to bring it as opposed to what I thought. No, nah, they're, they're not on our level. I think they're closer than I thought.